Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we shall look at some special data structures supported by Python, namely lists and tuples. We have already been introduced to lists in some of our previous tutorials. Here, we shall look at them in a little more detail. The list type is a container that holds a number of other objects in the given order. Lists allow you to add and remove objects from the sequence. First, let's start the interpreter by typing IPython in the terminal. We create a first list by typing num equal to within square brackets 1, 2, 3, 4. Items enclosed in square brackets separated by commas constitute a list. One neat feature of Python list is that we can store data of any type in them. We can have a list something like var equal to within square brackets 1, 1.2, 1 within quotes string print var. As you can see, var contains an integer, a float and a string. Similar to strings, we can conc concatenate two lists using the plus operator. So num plus var will return a new list with the contents of both num and var one after the other. Let's look at what num contains now. Print num. As you can see, num is unchanged by the plus operator. We have already covered the append function in one of our previous tutorials. To add a single object at the end of a list, the append function is used. Let's now append minus 5 to num. num dot append within brackets minus 5. The contents of num have been changed now. Print num. Append takes only one argument and append behaves different from the plus operator. While plus returns a new list with two lists added, append will simply add the entire object to the end of the list. num dot append within square brackets 9 comma 10 comma 11 print num. This adds the entire list as a single element and not a separate elements. In order to add a list as separate elements, we use the extend function. Let's reinitialize num to num equal to within square brackets 1 comma 4 comma minus 6 num dot extend within square brackets 2 comma 8 comma 0 print num as you can see the elements of the list have been added separately to num let's now move on to see more functions available with lists to reverse a list, we have the reverse function. Please note the order of elements in num. Let's now do num.reverse. Now after using the reverse function, let's check the value of num. Print num. Please note that the reverse function has actually manipulated the original list. To remove a particular list, to particular element from the list, Python provides the remove function. num.remove of 8. If the given argument is present more than once in the list, then the first occurrence of that element is removed. The slicing and striding concepts which we covered in arrays work with lists as well. Let's revisit the concept by looking at some examples. Let's initialize a new list a equal to within brackets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Print a of 1 colon 3. This returns a list with the second and third element of A. One important feature of list indexing is a negative index. In lists, minus 1 indicates the last element of the list. Print A of minus 1. Minus 1. Similarly, minus 2 indicates the second last element and so on, so forth. Now these negative indexes can also be used in slicing. If you try print a of 1 colon minus 1, we get a list which excludes the first and the last element of a. And if we do not specify the start and or the end, end index, the value the, the, uh, that is taken by default are the first and the last elements. Print a colon a of colon 3 
will return a list beginning from the f from the beginning up to the fourth element of list. We can perform striding as well by p specifying a step size. Print a of one colon minus one colon two. This gives us the second, fourth, and so on elements up to the last element of the list. Print a of colon colon two. We'll skip all the even placed elements of a and print the rest of them. With step sizes, if we specify negative values, we get some really interesting results. Let's try print a of four colon minus one colon minus one. Here we begin at the fifth element and go up to the second element in the reverse order since step size is minus one. Print a of colon colon minus one. This is very interesting. This returns a slice with all the elements of A in the reverse order. Here, the negative step indicates that the starting point by default has to be the last element, the ending point has to be the first element, and the order has to be reversed. Let's move on to other functionality now. We can check for containership of elements within lists as well. Let's look at the contents of num. Print num. To check if the number 4 is present in the list, we type 4 in num, which returns true if the number is present. Now let's move on to tuples. Python provides su support for special immutable lists known as tuples. To create a tuple instead of the square brackets used for lists, we use normal brackets. t equal to open brackets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, enter. Its elements can also be accessed using indi indexes just like this. Print t of 0 plus t of 3 plus t of minus 1. This returns the sum of the first, the fourth and the last element of the tuple t. But an operation like t of 4 equal to 7 is not permitted. Hence, you cannot change uh, the individual elements of the tuple. The, hence, they are immutable. These features of tuples have their advantages. To see where they are used, we first create two variables. a, comma b equal to 1, comma 6. Print a, comma b. As you can see, multiple variable assignments are possible using tuples. Now let's swap their, their, their values. The normal approach would be to create a temporary variable to hold the value and uh, and then use them use that to swap the values. But because of tuples, we can do something really cool like b comma a equal to a comma b. Print a comma b. As you can see, the values are swapped, and this swapping works for all types of variables. This is possible because of something magical that Python does called tuple unpacking and packing. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial on lists and tuples. In this tutorial, we have learnt about initializing various uh, initializing of lists, various list operations, slicing and striding. We have learnt about tuple initialization, packing and unpacking. In the next session, we shall cover more on Python supported data structures. Thank you.